Fatigue, again, has been a, a really a, a, a confusing issue for scientists as well as for physicians for, and for exercise science scientists for many years. Uh, a lot of people, uh, the exercise science people, for example, want to define fatigue as simply the inability to contract your muscles. Clinicians, on the other hand, are simply asking the patient how much fatigue you have, and, and the fatigue that they are talking about there, that the patients tell them about, is the fact that they feel tired. They feel like they can't do anything, even though if they, they were for, forced to, they could still contract their muscles. I uh, have learned to believe, and I do believe, and I hope other people will begin to believe, that fatigue is all of the above that it is a complex system that's, that is actually trying to protect you from using up your energy stores, much like pain is trying to protect you from injuring yourself badly and continuing to damage your tissue. Uh, the fatigue is actually there to prevent you from using up your energy stores. And as a result, it, I believe that fatigue is in fact a sensory phenomena. And you feel tired. It is also a condition where you don't have to feel anything at all, but in fact, the signaling will actually shut down your motor command. You're going to be unable to make a movement, even though if I electrically stimulate it, you could still move the, your, your muscles. So that's fatigue, the sensory component is fatigue, and all of the other downstream phenomena that protect you from uh, using up all of your ATP stores. All those things, I believe, are the fatigue system. Many patients that have uh, ME uh, chronic fatigue have both pain and fatigue, and it's clinically significant pain and fatigue. Uh, this actually makes a lot of sense if you begin to look at exactly what the signaling of fatigue is in skeletal muscle. We determined that, in fact, the metabolites that are produced that signal fatigue are exactly the same metabolites that actually will also signal pain. And those metabolites, for those of you that, that want to know this, are lactate, acid, and ATP. They, they need all three of those in combination to produce fatigue at lower concentrations. If you increase the concentrations, you will feel pain. And the pain you generally feel from skeletal muscle is ache, aching pain when this happens. So for that reason, it's, not, uh, it's almost expected that a lot of patients with chronic fatigue in, in ME will have both chronic fatigue and, and chronic pain. In most individuals, uh, when you exercise, if you exercise strongly enough, you will feel first fatigue and then eventually you will feel ache, aching pain as well if you continue to contract your muscles. But if you quit exercising, that disappears pretty quickly. In patients with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, uh, they also experience the same thing, but not as, as, as usefully <laughs> initially. So that if they exercise, they will feel both the uh, initially, they will feel maybe a little fatigue, although they typically don't know how much fatigue they're feeling. We believe partly it's because they feel fatigue all the time. And therefore, there's no real difference between when they actually are signaling more fatigue. Uh, but the other thing is they also then, as they continue to exercise, will feel ache uh, as well. However, in chronic fatigue and, and, fire, and uh, patients with ME, uh, they typically uh, don't actually experience the decrease in pain following exercise that normal people do. Instead the pain either stays the same for a long period of time or actually gets worse over the next few hours, two days that occur. Now, why that happens is a good question. We actually believe it happens because of the, the increase in the amount of, of protein that actually encodes and signals pain and fatigue in these patients. We think at least some of these patients, and we see that in the gene expression, uh, uh, that uh, pattern, we see actually see an increase in the RNA, which would indicate that they could be making more of the receptors, which means they would feel more pain and more fatigue following the, this condition. So there is a question then 
in, the, in these patients, is there, uh, are there levels of, of lactic acid and uh, other metabolites, the protons, meaning the, the pH, the, uh, the acidity of the solution, and the amount of ATP, are those the cause of the extended cause in, uh, of pain and fatigue in chronic fatigue patients? So the way the system works, if in fact they had increased signaling of pain and fatigue from the uh, neurons that innervate the muscle, in fact, what should happen would be the, the metabolite levels in those patients should actually be lower than in normal people. And that's in fact what uh, several labs have shown, is that in fact the actual levels of these uh, uh, metabolites that, that are produced by exercise are actually reduced at rest when these people are just sitting around not doing anything. They're actually lower than, than they are in uh, normal people which would indicate that their signaling is, in fact, high and that, in fact, they're feeling more fatigue and more uh, pain uh, all the time, basically. Uh, chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia patients and patients with ME uh, often feel that if they're in a stressful situation, they can begin to, to feel uh, pain and fatigue even though they aren't exercising. One of the things that happens when people are stressed is that their autonomic system gets activated, and it gets activated in a pretty profound way. Uh, as I have said in some of the earlier uh, webinars, it is very clear there is an interaction between the signaling of pain and the activation of the autonomic nervous system. And this activation of the autonomic nervous system is fully capable of actually making uh, a signaling that actually will get to the muscle uh, uh, neurons themselves. And that activation of the muscle neurons by the autonomic nervous system can actually directly cause the activation of pain and fatigue. Uh, it can do this in, in, in normal people, actually, as well. But in chronic fatigue patients, this is much more profound. Some chronic fatigue ME patients, actually, uh, uh, relatively few of them, but we've uh, uh, fortunately had some of them as, as subjects in our experiments, some of them actually don't feel much pain at all, even though they have a pretty profound fatigue. And the question is, how can that happen if the two are coupled? As I was indicating previously, the concentration of the uh, uh, metabolites does make a difference in whether you actually will uh, detect and feel and sense the fatigue and, and or pain. In some patients, we don't quite understand how, but we believe that, in fact, they have altered the only the neurons, specific neurons, that encode fatigue and not altered the neurons that normally would encode, would encode pain. And for that reason, those patients feel a considerable amount of fatigue, but very little, if any, pain. And most patients still have some pain, maybe not clinic, clinically significant pain, but some of them generally really don't have much pain at all. And we think that's the reason. Many patients with ME chronic fatigue find that the, the pain doesn't uh, occur immediately, although some do. Some feel the pain even while they're exercising and then that continues to get worse over time. Some of them, however, feel that there's a period of time when they don't feel it and then it comes on and lasts for a very long time. In normal people, in normal subjects, if, in fact, you exercise muscles that you really haven't used much, uh, typically people will feel pain, a little bit of pain at the time and then it will decrease for 24 hours and 24 hours later the pain will come back. We call this condition DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness. Okay. This, is, this happens in normal people if they haven't used it, the muscle, so if they're unfit or if there's just a muscle group they haven't used, this is a phenomenon that occurs. Exactly why it is a delay of 24 hours before these people begin to feel it uh, is a question that people have asked for a number of years. We actually looked into this because we didn't believe the, the current hypothesis was that in fact you dam were damaging your muscles and therefore the damage actually caused the pain that you felt. 
Now, of course, that makes no sense. Why is there a delay then? Because you damage the muscle immediately, you should feel it immediately, which is part of the reason we didn't believe that, that in fact, that was a phenomenon. What we discovered was that, in fact, even in normal people, if they exercise muscles that they haven't uh, used much and they get DOMS, what we saw is that the gene expression for the same genes that we saw to be altered in chronic fatigue patients were altered uh, in a similar fashion. In other words, the gene expression increased. What we discovered is that what should happen and what normally happens in fit individuals and athletes that are conditioned is that the receptors actually decrease during the following exercise. Now it takes time for these genes to you know, increase the protein, even though the gene is expressed almost immediately. It takes 8 to 24 hours for the, for the genes to be fully expressed and for them to be inserted into the neurons in your muscles to detect pain and fatigue. We think that it's that time that it takes for those receptors to actually increase the protein uh, in, the, uh, in your muscle sensory neurons. It's that, it takes that long to, uh, for that to occur. We think the same thing is happening in chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia patients. The difference being that in those patients, uh, unlike in normal people where the, it goes away in, in 48 hours, in chronic fatigue and, and, and uh, ME patients, it actually continues on for maybe days, sometimes weeks. So for a lot of any chronic fatigue research has actually shown that there are alterations in the immune system uh, that are really unexpected and really not consistent. And we believe those are there too. So people ask, you know, well, what, what role does the immune system play if, in fact, you're not seeing much, much of a change? We didn't see that much of a change gene, in gene expression. Well, what we believe is that it's similar to the pain system. Uh, that, in fact, with pain, and since some of these patients do have pain, that we know that the sensory neurons that encode pain actually liberate chemicals at the, the site where the injury occurs and the pain, from the pain they're detecting, uh, that in fact those chemicals activate the immune system and they activate an immune cascade that incre causes a considerable amount of inflammation. That inflammation we know liberates more what we call cytokines, chemicals, that then activate the sensory neurons more, producing even more pain, so it amplifies the pain. We believe that in many of the chronic fatigue patients, the same thing is going on. That in fact, the sensory signaling itself, of fatigue and the sensory signaling of pain that they are, they are sending actually activates the immune system within the muscle, which then causes the release of more cytokines at that site. We have, and there's good evidence for this. And that release of cytokines then amplifies the pain even more than it would be just from the sensory signaling. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube, tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar www.me-cvsvereniging.nl Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chatsessies.